another wonderful day to all of you, BCC people and precious brothers and sisters from many other different places and meetings, gatherings of God's children. Hallelujah. We are continuously walking with Jesus, walking with God. Just like the patriarchs in the days of old, like Enoch who walked with God, who was never found because God took him <laughs> unto himself. Also the others, the others like Abraham who obeyed God when God told him to go even to a place where he hasn't, he has not uh, known before. And uh, these are just two of the many that uh, were spoken to by God, heard the voice of God, and they responded in faith. And uh, because faith is an action, they acted on whatever God has told them uh, under the guidance of God's Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise God. Because God is spirit and he is holy. <laughs> when he speaks to his people, he expects his people also to start living a holy life, sanctified, set-apart life. Praise God. And uh, this morning, we will be talking about uh, a Spirit-filled life, life that is full of the Spirit every day, everyday life that's full of the Spirit. Praise God. Thank you again, dear Father God, for the day, wonderful day that you have given to us, extension of our life, another day in which we can live this life for the glory of your name. Thank you for helping us that every day is a life that we ought to live following you and serving you. And in all this, we need the help of the Holy Spirit who will comfort us, who will guide us, counsel us, advocate for us, teach us, remind us, show us things to come, etc. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your ever-present presence <laughs> in our life. We seek and enjoy your intimacy and your friendship. Hallelujah. It is our own and privilege to partner with you, even today. You will help me Holy Spirit, to speak clearly, you will supply the words, and you will help your people listen carefully and receive in faith every word that you will speak to them, and that above all, you will give them the grace and the courage to act in faith, start obeying. Salamat, O Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. I just want to remind you before I proceed that uh, this uh, simple broadcast that we are producing and broadcasting to you every Sunday is uh, only a supplement uh, to help uh, each one of you grow in your spiritual life. But this should not take the place of your own personal devotion, a time in which you set apart every day wherein you will spend before the Lord, talking to Him, that's called prayer. Listening to Him, that's called reading your word. Those are the two very important Christian disciplines that any believer should not take for granted. You should always have time to talk to the Lord and time to listen to what He has to say. And then, on top of that too, a commitment to obey. Wherever you are, whatever He wants us done, we must commit to be obedient. Hallelujah. This, are, this, that, this is the only way in which we will enjoy the blessedness of walking with God. And so, 
For today, let me read Ephesians 5 verse 7, verse 18. Ephesians 5 verse 18, we have discussed this verse and the whole chapter, in fact, the whole book of Ephesians. There was a time when we studied this uh, verse by verse. But uh, because we're talking about the Holy Spirit for some time now, it's good to revisit these uh, ideas which Paul has uh, put into writing. Like this one, it says here, Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Now, this short verse is divided into two. The first is a prohibition on believers. Meaning, these are the believers were uh, prohibited or discouraged, even commanded not to do this. Instead, there is a recommendation, you know, that Paul has told them so that this is what they are going to do instead. Uh, instead of doing the first, they should stop doing that, not do that anymore. And instead, they will start doing this one and continue to do this one and live their life every day in this you know, in this state. Praise God. So firstly, he said, do not get drunk on wine. Why? That's a good question. What happens when a person is drunk on wine? You know, he loses self-control. He loses his mind. He loses the ability to think properly, to speak correctly, <laughs> to act and behave you know, properly because drunkenness will lead to debauchery, meaning unwanted, wild kind of living. And that is not what God wants His people to become. That is not the kind of life that will bring blessing to people around us and to the world. That is why the Apostle Paul, as the Spirit inspired him, wrote this very important provision. It was common in all uh, during uh, those days, especially in the pagan world no, of Greece, where uh, Ephesus, uh, Greece, and uh, you know the Mediterranean area, yeah, you know from Palestine to Asia Minor to Greece and to many other parts, including Northern Africa, uh, wine was rampant in those days. And at the same time, even now, it's even more rampant because there are so many ways now to produce wine, to make wine. Different kinds of wines are available. You have vodka, you have rum, you have, you know, you have beer, and you have uh, whiskey, <laughs> etc., etc. So many. Any intoxicating drink, you know, is, is prohibited here by the Apostle Paul simply because it will affect your thinking, your senses will be hampered. You cannot think properly. Instead, he said, be filled with the Spirit. This is a strong recommendation from the Apostle Paul for believers. Now, let the unbelievers continue the way they want to live their lives. Because that's who they are, you know. But those who claim to follow Jesus must live a different kind of life. They are, they, live, they are living this life. This is the way we ought to live a life. They are going that way. We are going this way, you know. That's what Paul was saying. So, Instead, be filled with the Spirit. And then he starts talking about manifestations that we can see when a person is filled with the Holy Spirit. Beginning with the no next verse, he says, huh? what does he say? He say, speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Look at this line. Speak to one another we using psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. 
Why would he say speak to one another and then you sing hymns and spiritual songs and even psalms? The word psalms are songs. Songs in poetry. <laughs> but instead of singing them, we are to speak them to one another. You see? And then, in the next verse, half of the verse, sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. Hmm. In kind, it is it 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 looks like it's confusing, but actually it is not. He was referring to already written songs, psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Those are already written. Uh, you know, let's say, messages, music. The second is impronto, sing and make music. It is you who was encouraged by Paul as you get filled of the Spirit to sing and make music in your heart unto the Lord as you are being inspired by the Spirit who fills you up. In other words, when you are filled with the Spirit, you know, it will overflow by in your life, through your life, by you singing and making music or melody, even if naturally you do not know how, you see. Hmm. So, one very clear manifestation of a spirit-fed life is this expression of spontaneity and joy of life, which is not common when you look at the world. Most of the people of the world, they do not have that spontaneity, you know, expressing joy in daily life. They would always look for joy somewhere else or happiness. Usually, it's through drinking, through, you know, partying, you know, through whatever. They go to, let's say, movies or they go to clubs. Uh, well, many other ways because there is no inherent joy and spontaneity in their life. But the Spirit of God, once He fills your life, you know, remember Jesus was talking about when a person is filled with the Holy Spirit because he has put his faith in Jesus and drinks of the Spirit through Jesus Christ. In John chapter 7, Jesus said, Out of his innermost being or his belly, rivers of living water will flow. Imagine that. There is an unstoppable, you know, joy, peace, gladness, excitement, desire to serve, desire to do good things coming out from within you. It's not, it's unstoppable because it's likened to a river or a spring. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. My question is, is this happening in your Christian life? If it is not, then seek and let the Holy Spirit fill you up, you know, and let him allow you to start experiencing this. Huh? Amen. Imagine if you can just suddenly burst out into songs, songs of joy and praise and worship, songs of declaration, songs of faith, songs of hope. It's also good to sing uh, already written songs and hymns, but Wow, how much better when God, the Holy Spirit, will give us our own uh, tune, our own melody, our own songs, as we sing them unto the Lord by His Spirit. Also, in uh, the next verse, he says, Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ah, always giving thanks. The word always is continuity. You know, there is not a breaking moment. There is not a blank spot there. It's always. So if you put us in a, in a daily, in, in term of days, uh, it should be every day. Right? 
It's not a Sunday thing that you are giving thanks to God. You are only giving thanks to God because it's a Sunday morning. And you go to church and say, thank you, God. But it's an everyday thing. It's a every minute thing, every hour thing, every second thing. Hallelujah. All throughout the days of your life, you just are expressing your gratitude unto God in everything. So, if you are familiar, you would remember that in another letter of the Apostle Paul, his letter to the Thessalonians, he said uh, in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16 and 17 and 18. In verse 16, he would say, Be joyful always. Okay? There is that word again, always. Always. Can you say the word? Always. Not once in a while, not sometimes, not often. No, but it is always. Uh, it is always. Hallelujah. Be joyful always. It doesn't say be joyful sun on Sundays. <laughs> it's always. Whether it's a Sunday, a Friday, a Thursday, it's morning or noontime or evening, it's always. Be joyful always. Pray without ceasing or pray continually. Always and continually is the same. Hallelujah. And then, in everything, give thanks. The next verse is verse 18. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So, returning to Ephesians, in chapter 5, in uh, the verse 20, always give thanks, praise God, to God for everything, for everything. Now, you already know, we already know that not all things are good. Some things are not good. <laughs> but he doesn't say give thanks for the good things. Uh, but he said for everything. So even in the bad things, we learn to give thanks. Now, that's quite impossible because the normal human understanding would tell you, you will only give thanks for the good things. Uh, how can you give thanks for the bad things? You see. But a Christian filled by the Spirit finds a way, you know. Hallelujah. And even if he cannot find a way, he still will give thanks because the Spirit would lead him. Hallelujah. He is not a person that is led by his mind, by his understanding. He is a person that's led by, led by the Spirit. And when the Spirit is there filling you up, you, know, you just allow Him to lead your life. And He will cause you to give thanks to God for everything, even in the unwanted things in your life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Give thanks to God for everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, which means for the sake of Jesus. Hallelujah who gave us the example and the model in this aspect. Then in the next verse, in verse 21, he says, Submit to one another. This is a manifestation of being filled by the Spirit. Because when the Spirit fills us, He makes us submissive. He makes us yielded. He makes us meek. We are never submissive, no meek, no yielded at all times. On our own. We can be submissive, one time, several times, a couple of times, but not all the time. There is always this place in us that we want to, you know, complain or want to fight back, you know, want to resist. But here we are told to submit. When we are filled with the Spirit, very easy for us to submit to one another. Why? Out of reverence for Christ. Because we put a high honor, no extravagant honor or respect unto Jesus Christ, who is our Lord, who is our Savior. We do not want His name to be tarnished. Hallelujah. So we, you know, we submit. We learn to submit. Then He gives us an example of submission, which is in the case of the wives and husbands. The wives submitting to the husbands, the husbands loving their wives. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. And then he talks about the parents or the children obeying the parents and the parents honoring their children and not abusing them. Praise be to God. 
Then he talks about the slaves, the slaves obeying their earthly masters with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart. And then he talks about the masters also honoring you know, and treating their slaves with honor. All of these are manifestation of being spirit field. You know, imagine, imagine, because this is a daily thing, if you know, may notice, you know. Hallelujah. Are you noticing? <laughs> the relationship of husband and wife is a daily thing. That's not a Sunday thing. That's a daily thing. When you wake up in the morning, you would see your wife, the husband, the wife would see his, her husband. On Monday, on Tuesday, the same thing. And there are times when you are not in good terms with one another. Diba? Mm. However, because your spirit feels, and you remember that God lives in you by spirit, you choose to submit, you choose to yield, you choose to give way, you know, to each other. You choose to honor, you choose to forgive, you choose to say, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hallelujah. And sometimes you do not have to say it with the actual words. You can show actions that you are saying, I'm sorry. You, know, you can show it with your smile, with your face, you know, and several other ways. Praise God. The relationship of children and parents, that's a daily thing. You see? Hallelujah. There is not a thing that in which you are only a father one Sunday morning of every week. <laughs> no. <laughs> you, that you will not honor your father. You will only honor your father and obey your father on Sundays <laughs> because it's a holy day. And then the rest of the day, no, you may not. No. Uh, children are supposed to obey their parents every day, sunrise to sunset. And the parents are supposed to give respect, you know, not mistreat, not, not exasperate, not give their children a difficult life. No. Hmm. The same with slaves and masters. Especially in those days, because once you are a slave to this master, you know the master owns your life 24-7. <laughs> a little different now because owner, the employees and the employers, you know, only as a kind of relationship at least uh, uh, six, six days a week. Yeah. And uh, the employees, they have a rest day. And when, during the rest day, the employers uh, do not have any authority over their lives. They can go anywhere, they can whatever they want to do. But in those days now, Hmm. The slaves were owned by the masters. Hmm. It's an everyday thing. So he's using these three examples, husbands, wives, parents, children, masters, and slaves, because these were daily things that's happening. And he wants us to know that in every day of our life, we, either we are a wife, a husband, a father, or a child, a boss, or an employee, that we are to act, you know, under the influence, not of wine, but under the influence of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. We are to be submissive. We are to have a gentle, you know, meek heart. I know that we cannot do this in perfect manner because of the flesh. Nah, because of the flesh. The flesh is still alive. It's still active. Scripture encourages us to uh, mortify the flesh or kill the flesh. Not kill the flesh literally, of course. But it means we should not yield to the flesh. We must yield to the spirit. But again, as uh, reality you know, would tell us, there are moments in which our flesh would get a better uh, moment over us. You know, and the flesh would manifest Hallelujah, to our own embarrassment, 
So what should we do? Repent. Just change our heart. Change our mind. Cry out to God and you know, repent before people. Say so. Hallelujah. That's how we live a spirit-filled life. And then in the last portion of this living a spirit-filled life is can be found in Ephesians 6, starting with verse 10. And he's talking about being strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. I will differ this until the next Sunday. We will read this next Sunday and talk about expressing the spiritual life, standing on the Lord and in the position that He has given us. But for the moment, let me remind you, we are not to be filled with wine. We are to be filled with the Spirit. So how do we get filled? Uh, drink by drinking. How do you become drunk with wine? You drink lots of wine. Diba? One case of beer, trib, long neck, <laughs> of tanduay. You know, no one gets filled by little drinking little wine. You drink lots of wine. Uh, then you become drunk. In the same manner, you drink lots of the spirit. It is not that the Spirit comes in volume. Mm. Yeah. But it is more of us yielding. It is our part. It is our duty to yield more of ourselves to the Spirit. Because it is the Holy Spirit can only has, has, have us to the degree that we are willing to yield, surrender, and offer ourselves to Him. Hallelujah. So our offering of ourselves to Him is our way of drinking of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Remember, He was given for all of us so we could drink of Him. We read that in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 13. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 13. Hallelujah. It says, We were all baptized by one Spirit into one body with the Jews or Greeks labor free, and we were all given the one Spirit to drink. Now, we were all given one spirit to drink. So you're given the spirit to drink. You're not given the wine to drink. You're given the spirit to drink. You're not giving, you were not given the wisdom of the world so you can drink from the wisdom of the world. You were given the spirit of God so you can drink of the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Become intoxicated with the spirit of God. If, if we, if, if only because we lose our mind, it, then let's lose our mind under the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Spirit, rather than lose our mind because we have drunk so much wine. No. Hallelujah. So we can live a spiritual life. Hallelujah. Amen. We can be spontaneous with our worship. Our worship, our praises, our thanksgiving is no longer confined to an hour, a day, you know, you know, because it's Holy Day, because it's Sunday, or because it's it's prayer time, then let's pray, because it's fasting time, let's fast. No, it should be spontaneous. Hallelujah. Any time, any moment, the Spirit would whisper and would nudge us to do or to act on anything. That our life is there totally yielded, willing to do on anything that the Holy Spirit tells us to do. That's living under the power of the Spirit that is being filled with the Spirit. The way we relate with our partners, our spouses, in the way we relate with our children, it should be spontaneous. This relationship should be spontaneous. Hallelujah. Not stiff and rigid, you know, but spontaneous, free and liberating. Uh, casual, but very uh, real and authentic and genuine and transparent. Hallelujah. Amen. Even our relationship as uh, between slaves and, and masters, you know, meaning in our workplace. Praise God. He wants us that to happen. Praise God. You notice that the relationship of husband is the closest, then the relationship of parents and children is the next, then the relationship of masters and servants. Those are very important. One, two, and three, you know relationship and in those relationships we need we need to always be filled with the spirit then we start touching the world we start touching the world 
Hallelujah. We can never touch properly this world in the power of the Spirit using our life when these three relationships are not properly in place. Hallelujah. Let me pray. Father, thank you for your goodness, for your grace, your mercy. Hallelujah. Thank you. Holy Spirit, thank you for you were given to us so we can drink of you at all times. Hallelujah. Let our life be filled always with you so we can live this life of Jesus. Hallelujah. In a spontaneous manner. Not confined to a day, not confined to a place, not confined to an hour or time. But should be an everyday thing, O oh Lord. Our worship, our praises, our thanksgiving. Hallelujah, O oh Lord. Thank you. Our relationship. Hallelujah. With those who are very close to us. Starting with our spouses, our children. And even, Lord God, those who are working with us in our homes. O oh Lord God. Hallelujah. Let, O oh Lord God, freedom from the Spirit God. Our portion of the moment. Brokenness, transparency, humility, kindness, meekness, O oh Lord. Teach us to die every day, dear God. Teach us like Paul when he shared that wherever he goes, O oh God, he carries around the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus will be made manifest in his body. Thank you, dear Holy Spirit. Without you, we can never make it, O oh Lord. But with you, nothing is impossible. We will live a powerful, authentic, fruitful, productive life for the glory of Jesus. You will glorify the name of Jesus through our lives. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.